So I've been listening to the audio New New Testament, KJV, as read by James Earl Jones, and I just wanted to think about something, so I paused it. I've been having severe headaches lately, so I have to listen to a lot of things um, because my headaches are just really, really bad. So anyway, um, so... Um, back to what I was saying. So it's going, the story where, um, in Matthew, where Herod sl- slew all of the children, two years old and younger, not only in Bethlehem, but in all the coasts thereof, um, and how that was such a tragedy, and how it says, and there was re- weeping in Rama, or I'm butchering this. There was weeping in Rama for Rachel was weeping for her children, for they were not. So that was a fulfillment of that prophecy. But how, in the midst of such a terrible, terrible, awful, awful event, that Jesus, you know, was secure. He, he was, he, he was secure because. Um, Joseph was warned in a dream to go ahead to get up and flee to Egypt to fulfill more prophecies. Um, and in so doing, baby Jesus is, um, escaped being, um, being, uh, killed from Herod. And so I was like, okay, you know, what is, is there a principle behind the mere semantics of the, of the, of the story um, and the facts of the story that could apply to us regarding identification truths for us today as the church. Now, I recognize that, you know, this was before the church was even revealed, obviously. So the church is still a mystery at this point. And so, and um, anyway, not even Satan knew about God's plan for the church at this point. So anyway, um, so I was like, okay, so um, things happen. Like the geopolitical climate of that time, like um, Herod was an Edomite. He wasn't even a real Jew. He was a compromiser and, and he just, you know, he was against God and everything, even though he outwardly seemed to... Um, you know, go along with the Jewish customs and stuff and the temple and all that mess. Well, sometimes in today's day and age, we find ourselves in geopolitical climates where terrible things happen. And sometimes God allows things to happen. We might not ever understand this side of heaven. Why? But I'm thinking of... um, 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 collateral damage, like what's going on in the Middle East. I'm sure there was so much collateral damage of innocent civilians, children who are being killed, right? Just like the children were collateral, collateral damage, unfortunately, when Herod tried to slay every one of them and to get the one that he was looking for, right? But just as in that story that hope was secure, hope was steadfast, hope was protected, um, I, I have to remind myself that even if the worst were to happen, like in my particular situation, even, I don't even like to think about it, but even if the Lord, cho- let's say the Lord chose to heal my husband on the other side uh, in heaven rather than on this side on earth with me. I have to remember that my hope is secure. My hope is Jesus. Jesus is secure. Jesus is steadfast. Jesus is not going anywhere. And um, Jesus has overcome. So just as the baby Jesus was steadfast and secure and protected, and Jesus himself is our hope and our truth, um, that, um, that the same principle applies to us 
And unfortunately, we live in a fallen world. Horrible things happen. It doesn't mean we don't pray. It doesn't mean we don't weep. It doesn't mean we don't come alongside our brothers and sisters and pray with them and weep with them and grieve with them and, and lift each other up and help bear each other's burdens. But it just means that in the midst of all that, Jesus is in the middle. Whether he, whether people feel him or not, whether he is, whether, you know, oh, it's, it's, that's why it's by faith. But I, I have to remember this. And my prayer, I mean, of course, my prayer is that God will heal my husband this side of heaven. Um, but sometimes the Lord has his own, you know, the Lord's plans, his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. So, um, yeah, um, but no matter, even if horrible things happen, Jesus is still there right in the middle of it. He, G- Jesus is there. He's secured. He, he's protected. We are protected in him. We are hidden in him. Just as like baby Jesus was hidden away from Herod, we are hidden away from the world. We are hidden in Christ. Our life is hid with Christ in God, Colossians 3, 3, I believe. And so no matter what happens, we are hidden in him. And just like... You know, we go down to the bottom of the boat with Jesus, right? And and rest in him while all the storms swirl all around us. And we just, Jesus wants us to just hide ourselves in the, in the bottom of the boat with him and rest while everything else is going on around us. Okay.